Hello and welcome to a video providing an introduction to rate kinetics. And in this video, uh, we'll look at zero order kinetics with definitions uh, and graphical representations of zero order kinetics. Moving on to first order kinetics with an introduction to the exponential function uh, and the importance of that. And then going on to the michaelis menten equation, which looks at the interplay between zero order and first order kinetics. This is clearly a huge topic uh, and we won't be looking at any detail into the you know, advanced mathematics around rate kinetics, but a, a firm basic understanding of some key principles uh, will stand you in good stead for getting most of the marks on the written uh, and certainly coming up with some sensible graphs uh, and some sensible comments in the viva. So starting with zero order kinetics, a kind of overarching definition is that the rate of reaction is independent of the concentration of reacting components. So another way of saying that is that the rate of the reaction is a constant. Applying this general principle to uh, a pharmacological um, context that we're actually worried about in terms of drug concentrations and elimination of a drug, we can say that if a drug exhibits zero order kinetics, then the rate of elimination of that drug is independent of plasma drug concentration. And we can represent that graphically uh, using the following graph. This is the primary FRCA, so of course there's a graph. And if we plot time against plasma concentration, if a drug is exhibiting zero order kinetics, at time zero, we'll start with our drug concentration having just administered it. And if the rate of elimination is independent of drug concentration, i.e. the rate of elimination is constant, you'll just see a constant decline in plasma concentration as time progresses, i.e. you'll see a straight line. The straight line, by definition, has a constant gradient, and the gradient of the line with plasma concentration as a function of time is the same as the rate. So if we were to plot a second graph, just looking at the gradient as time progresses, seen here, we would see that the rate of elimination is completely constant as time progresses. This is just a, a, another representation of, of what we're saying here. And if you dig into the maths, what you're actually doing is taking this function here, so plasma concentration as a function of time, and you're differentiating that function to give you the rate. And now we move on to first order kinetics. So for zero order kinetics, we said the rate uh, of the reaction was constant and was independent of substrate concentration. For first order kinetics, the rate of reaction is dependent on the concentration of the reacting components. So in first order kinetics, the rate is not a constant. Applying that general definition more specifically to pharmacology, we can say that the rate of elimination of a drug is dependent on the plasma drug concentration. And we can plot the same graph as we did before, but this time for first order kinetics. So again, it's the plasma concentration versus time graph. We start at time zero with our highest plasma concentration of the drug, we've just administered it. The gradient at this point will be its steepest because we're now talking about first order kinetics where the rate of reaction, which is represented by the gradient of this graph is proportional to your plasma concentration. So high plasma concentration, steep gradient. As the plasma concentration falls, as elimination takes place, the rate of reaction reduces and therefore the gradient also reduces. So you get a leveling off of this line as we progress through time and as we fall through plasma concentration. And we end up with a line that looks like this. And this is described by a negative exponential curve. And more specifically, this negative exponential function. Ct is the plasma concentration as a function of time. C0 is the initial plasma concentration and is the value on the y-axis here at time zero. E is Euler's number and has a value of approximately 2.7. K is the rate constant of elimination and T is time. We'll talk about this equation in far more detail in a later video. Um, it's, it's important in terms of fundamental understanding, but also there's a number of rules which drop out of this equation, uh, which often make their way onto the exam paper.
but just for now it's um the focus is on the shape of this graph and understanding the difference between this graph and that of the zero order kinetics next so we look at the michaelis mentor equation which models the rate kinetics of uh, a biological reaction usually quoted in terms of um, an enzyme substrate reaction where we've got uh, let's say for example a, a drug molecule being metabolized by an enzyme uh, and being being broken down the equation uh, is is as follows so v is the velocity of the overall reaction or the rate of the overall reaction and that equals v max which is the maximum rate of that reaction multiplied by the substrate concentration which in this case would be the concentration of drug molecules divided by the michaelis constant plus the substrate concentration and the michaelis constant can be thought of as an indicator of the efficiency of this system so a high value for a michaelis constant would be an enzyme which is incredibly efficient at performing its role whereas a low michaelis constant a small number for this would mean it's a slow enzyme system which is easily saturated and so what what does this mean in terms of being able to describe the rate kinetics in relation to both substrate concentration and efficiency of the overall system well to do that we can take a look at two extremes in extreme one we've got loads of drug and we've got an inefficient enzymatic process we've got high plasma concentrations and a system which is not great at eliminating that drug in terms of the michaelis mentor equation that means we've got a large substrate concentration and we've got a small michaelis constant we then say we then look at this component in the in the equation and say well if we've got a small number plus a really big number that's pretty much just the big number so if substrate concentration is much larger than the michaelis constant we can say that this term of michaelis constant plus substrate concentration is pretty much or approximates to the substrate concentration that allows us to simplify the equation because now we have v max s over s where we can cancel the substrate concentration terms on top and underneath the the division line to give us the velocity of the reaction or the rate of the reaction is just a constant which is defined as this v max so if we were to plot that on a graph of rate of reaction as a function of varying substrate concentrations, we would see a straight line. Namely, that the rate of reaction is independent of substrate concentration, or in the specific drug example, that the rate of elimination of the drug is a constant and is not affected by plasma drug concentrations. So i.e. this is a zero order, this is a exhibiting zero order kinetics, which are often referred to as saturation kinetics. And moving over to the other extreme, in this case, we've got hardly any drug on board, so low plasma drug concentrations, and we have a very efficient enzyme system. So in the nomenclature of the michaelis menten equation, that gives us a small s and a big Km. Then using exactly the same argument that we did before, we can say that this term here, with a large Km and a small s, now approximates to just Km. And this can be uh, factorized, so we can bring the constants into one bracket. So V max is a constant number and Km is a constant number, but the substrate concentration is a variable. And this will have an impact now on, the, on what the graph looks like. So the velocity or the rate of the reaction, as plotted as a function of substrate concentration, has now become a diagonal line. So we've now got, rather than the zero order kinetics we saw before, where we just had a constant velocity irrespective of substrate concentration, we now have a, a proportional change in velocity um, accompanied by the change in substrate concentration. And the gradient of this graph is given by Vmax over Km. So the important point to note is that now we have dependency of the rate of reaction uh, dependency on the substrate concentration i.e this is now demonstrating first order kinetics so for any given system is it first order kinetics or zero order kinetics well the michaelis menten equation gives us a nice way to explain that it can be both if we plot the graph of velocity of reaction v against substrate concentration we've already seen how at very high substrate concentrations or when our michaelis menten constant is low i.e. it's an inefficient enzyme system 
we have a tendency towards zero order kinetics, namely that there's no change in rate of reaction with a change in substrate concentration. At the other example, which we saw in our example two, was that at very low substrate concentrations down this side of the graph, or with very high KMs, like efficient enzyme systems, we saw a tendency towards first order kinetics. And so for any given system, there's the ability to have both scenarios. And this will depend on both the Michaelis constant, i.e. how efficient the system is, but also the amount of substrate that the system is exposed to. Now for most drugs, the Michaelis constant is high enough, i.e. the system is efficient enough, to maintain first order kinetics almost irrespective of what the substrate concentration is. You'd have to go to unachievably high substrate concentrations to saturate um, the system. But for certain specific drugs, zero order kinetics is achieved at relatively modest drug concentrations. And examples of this would be ethanol and phenytoin. Thanks for listening. I hope that was useful.